Hey guys, it's Cass. Uh, Sorry for the little semi-informal, very chaotic scene that you're seeing. Um, Literally in the middle of packing. That's why all this over here is kind of chaotic. These behind me are for another small business I have of selling these to support um, some donation birth work I do. And I'm going to have my laptop with me because... Well, to be honest, TBI, recovery forever, and um, yeah, I need to have my notes. <laughs> it's Cass again, and in this video, I wanted to share some key points and pieces of advice on how to start journaling and how to stay motivated and consistent. I know that journaling is kind of taking up in a big trend right now. And I actually had two of my like personal friends reach out to me to be like, how? Because uh, I posted that I got a new journal color, which is the yellow one right here um, for this year. Um, and they were like, how do you do this? How do you stay consistent? I've been wanting to get into it for years. How do I do it? So it kind of sparked this video, but also it just had me like really deep dive on why I do it and how I do it, I guess, to try to give advice to them, which here we are. <laughs> but um, to me, journaling has taken on several different forms from writing angry and sad feelings to just to just get it out of me uh, to kind of more tracking memories and focusing more on the happy times of my life and documenting that way. Um, I've had moments where I've needed to use my journal every single day, sometimes even more than once a day, just to try to help myself while I'm healing and coping. Um, and then some weeks where I use it significantly less, like even once or twice a week, which I try to be more consistent than that even still. That's to say, like, all of them are what I needed at the times and the seasons I was at in my life. Um, so in turn, I 100% believe all ways of journaling are the right way. It entirely depends on where you're at in life, and that's kind of the beauty of it. Um, it's about you and what you want from it and what you need from it and your why. And I mean, yeah, basically your why of why are you doing this? Why do you need this? Why do you care to create this habit? As someone that's journaled almost daily for the past five years, and this is my sixth year going into it. These are my, all my journals right here. Um, I feel like I have some insight on the topic. Uh, so yeah, that's why I'm making this video. Kind of like I said, some friends reached out to me and I just wanted to chat. Here are my last five journals. Um, I'll show a little close-up shot since I'm not in the best place to pick them up for you. Um, but you could see on the outside, I've written the years. Um, Sorry, we got interrupted for baby. <laughs> um, but what I was saying is my 2019 and 2020 in that clip were together because it like really took me some time to get into the groove of just writing, like without feeling weird or feeling this like unspoken pressure of just needing to write words a certain way or to write the right thing, if that makes sense. I guess I was always worried that if I like ever looked back, I almost like felt this pressure to always be proud of making progress. So I wanted to, um, I guess just put like a better spin on it. And then I, I had that pressure to do that. But tip number one, don't lie. Don't lie in your journals. Whether you look back or not, I think if you're not being honest, you're not actually getting your true feelings and emotions out. So I didn't write that on here <laughs> but as a tip or advice, but that is probably honestly one of the biggest ones. I'm not exactly sure where that pressure comes from, but I know we all kind of feel it in some way when it comes to sharing stuff. And even though most people's journals are private like mine are nobody reads mine I don't ever plan to share them with anyone it's a cathartic process for me um but like I feel like in this day and age of like social media and stuff um I think it feels weird to put something out there because sometimes in 
our subconscious, we think someone else is going to see it and or judge us about it, which is kind of really stupid. But I think that takes some time to get over. So honestly, I think it was just I was pretty uncomfortable with getting comfortable with my feelings, truth be told. Over the years, I can say it's definitely changed. Uh, It's helped me change. It's grown in a positive way and it's helped me heal and honestly even flourish. Let's talk about some basic good notes to take with you into your journaling journey, if this, especially if you're new to this. One, apart from the lying, this is my list. <laughs> don't lie in your journal. One, if you don't know where to start or what to even write about, I suggest you start with prompts if writing out your thoughts and feelings feels weird. Because honestly, a big part of journaling is the ability to check in with yourself and that can feel kind of very foreign, especially if you don't do it. And like I said, you're new to this. Um, If you've never done it in like a physical written out form before, um, it's never a current thing. It's a recap and reflection thing, which again, if you don't just naturally do that very often in your life, this very much forces you to do that. But I'm going to say but a lot in here. (laughs) But if full sentences or being super structured feels difficult within a journal, um, I'd say like go key points, simple thoughts and phrases, brain dump lists, uh, just very quickly jot down current emotions or feelings, like something to get it out. The point is to express and give it a place to be held, uh, especially when it feels overwhelming. One of the best benefits to me in journaling is to just get it out of you, get it out of your brain. Uh, Chronic overthinkers and worry warts, I'm thinking specifically of you and looking at you. (laughs) And also, like, if you need to be a dear diary girly, no shame in that. Do it. You can write to your future self with positivity if a current event feels difficult. Um, You can honestly write to your past self to reflect and heal. Personally, I write to my current self to track memories and current feelings, Um, but I definitely wasn't always that way. In the beginning, uh, writing to my past self with my trauma was like a must. Like I needed to get right with myself, be honest with myself about kind of what was going on in my life and how I felt. Um, And it was like a little mini therapy session to just like word vomit, give my brain and emotions a much needed break by getting it out. Two, tip, tip number two. Make it a memory tracker or record keeping device if writing about your feelings isn't quite your thing. Or you could make it a mix of both, which is what I do. I've started to write on the inside cover what key moments have happened that year. If I ever feel like inclined to go back and reread memories, I haven't. But in case I ever do, um, kind of like a key of like, hey, this is what's in here and hopefully I'm throwing up. I really started this last year. Um, You can see on the 2019 and 2020, I wrote COVID on the outside, but on most of them, I've at least written, you know, a few big moments that have happened that year that I have documented in there. Um, You could even get like really specific and do page numbers if that's your thing. Make yourself a key and index at the beginning of your journal uh, that lists like those page numbers and those moments. So if you're going back to reference something, maybe in a quicker fashion or just to like remind yourself of certain things, um, that could really help. Tip number three, don't put pressure on yourself to be aesthetic. And there's also the option of physical versus digital. So I'm kind of like coupling two things in one here. If you feel like you need to buy a brand new pretty journal with new pens and that's motivating and that's going to get you there and to start journaling, go for it. But only if it's in your budget. Like, don't go into debt over this. Also, if a physical journal doesn't sound exciting but you still want the benefits journaling can give you, go digital. Digital journaling in places like Notion or in apps, fancy download versions, I'm sure that exist on Etsy, I haven't looked, Um, just, I'm sure there's a plethora of things. Or you can even go so simple as like typing in a Google Doc or Words or a Notes app and keeping it digital or printing it out, 
hole punching it and putting it in a three ring binder to have both digital and physical form. Another little keynote highlight here is in the newest Apple update that just happened, I think this last week, they just added a fancy new journal app. It's like they knew I was going to be talking about this. Um, it looks cool. Honestly, it looks really interesting. It could be really useful. Um, I'm not one of those girlies. I'm a pen and paper girl, but I did investigate the journal app a little bit here. And uh, clearly you could tell it's a trend if Apple's going to jump on it. Like I said, I won't be using it, but it looks really cool and can be like really easily accessible for a lot of people. And the biggest part of this is if you do go digital and you plan to look back or reference anything, girl, control F, like, hello, that's going to be your bestie. It's going to be the easiest way to reference things and much simpler to get to than a physical journal. And like I said, if you're on a budget, don't go into debt on this venture. It's not worth that. Use what you have or budget for something sparkly you have your eye on, but don't go into debt over it. A three-ring binder from the dollar store where you print things out or have lined paper that you can get, everything from the dollar store, it all works the same. And just a note as well, it doesn't need to be like fancy bullet journal style unless you want it to be that way, but a standard journal and a bullet journal, very different concepts there. I'm not a bullet journal girly. I did try, um, but I did link a few videos down below to investigate that. If that sounds like it's something more your speed versus just standard writing and or drawing your emotions and feelings out. If you're more of like bullet point kind of thing, if you're into tracking things, your habits, trackers are big for bullet journals. You can do that in a standard journal, but to me, they're very different things. Now let's chat a little bit more about how to make it a habit. The easiest one, carry it with you. Are you a book reader? Carry it with your current read or carry it around in your bag so you have it with you. And if you find a couple minutes throughout the day where say you're taking public transit, you could journal or read a book, <laughs> but journal, um, Take it to lunch and the first five minutes of your lunch break while your food is heating up, take a couple seconds to just journal something. The more that you see it, the more you'll think of journaling thoughts, memories, feelings, the more it'll just feel like something, especially if you're motivated to do it, the more you see it, the more you'll be reminded. Two, as far as making it a habit, create an entire routine around it, which sounds maybe bougie. Um, and not everybody has that kind of time and I get it. Um, but I would highly recommend like a morning or a night routine with your journal. Morning routine is more like with breakfast to write about hopes for your day, recap something that happened the day before after you've like slept on it and had some time to think. So it's maybe not so aggressive. Like I have been in my journals before, but more like you've had some time to process or you're still like having a hard time dealing with something, that's a great time to do it as a reflection the next day. But I've definitely started doing this more because I wrote, I've started doing this more because when I would write about things at night or right after big emotions, I'd hit these patches of really crappy dump, of really dumping crappy emotions in it, which is fine, can, which can be the purpose of your journal. But for me, I have the intention of using mine more for good moments and memories and journaling as like the bad things. Like while it was cathartic, it never made a happy journal to me. So it started to take on this, I can only journal if I'm upset or all my bad stuff was held here. And so I really wanted to break that. So that's why I've kind of like gone more towards doing it at a different time for different reasons. Like I said at the very beginning of this, I've gone through all the stages that I think one can within my journals. Where I'm at now, the tracking and recapping the good and positive things helps me with my gratitude. And that is significantly so much more important to me than being angry <laughs> because I'm not really like naturally an angry person. That's really honestly the last emotion I go to. But when my feelings are hurt or I feel misunderstood, they really rise to the top and journaling kind of helped me to deal with that and it also helped me to really be able to get it out somewhere 
without feeling like I always needed to have a person to turn to because a lot of times, especially when things were really bad for me, I didn't really have anyone to turn to that I felt like I could trust with the really heavy things that I was going through. Anyway, I digress. Nighttime routine, if you need a brain dump so your thoughts don't keep you awake at night, I highly recommend this for you chronic overthinkers. Um, Get it out, even if it isn't coherent thoughts or even full sentences, get it out so you can sleep and recover. The next day, you can look back at it, you can reorganize your thoughts, you can structure them again, you can have one half of the page of just a jumbled ass mess of just thoughts and words and things that don't make any sense and then you can restructure them on the other side the next day or a couple days later and be like this is in the moment this is how I'm processing it this is my reflection this is what all of that meant on the other page like it's just a really interesting process I guess I found I've done it always like I said um it kind of is more of like a instantaneous current thing, which I said a lot of journaling really isn't like that. It's more of a recap, reflect with yourself, a catch up with yourself. Um, but like the instantaneous, I just need to get it out because I'm really hurt or I'm really frustrated or I'm really even excited about something. And then the other side is let's recap, let's explain, let's talk it out with myself more, kind of more like something you would do actually in therapy. This does not replace therapy. Quick little disclaimer, this does not replace therapy. Can it work in addition to it? Phenomenally so. It can help you so much keep in mind the things that you want to talk to your therapist about. It can have things be less emotional so you can get them out in your journal. Getting your stuff out in your journal and you also have therapy, this can help you organize your thoughts to feel like you can get to more concise, structured points to discuss specific things with your therapist versus keeping all your emotion bottled up and held together until you get to therapy. And then sometimes, again, as I have personally dealt with, when you don't get it out in another way and it all comes out in therapy. Um, sometimes you like leave therapy feeling like you didn't quite get to everything because it's just a hot ass mess and your thoughts aren't organized. So journaling is great for that. And I think last but not least, like the third way of making this a habit Um, And honestly, one of the most important, in my opinion, is be committed and really take a look at why you want to be journaling in the first place. It can be any or all of the reasons I already listed, but with staying consistent, your own motivation for something can either make you take it seriously or not. Do you just want to be journaling because it's a little more trendy lately, which is fine if that's a reason that it's getting you to start, but is that a reason that's going to keep you motivated to keep going? Um, I would say find a bigger why than that or like, or to me, I think it's easier to stay consistent and make it a habit if it's really something that like helps motivate with your why. And what I mean by your why, like I kind of had said, like memory keeping, emotion dumping, whatever you're looking at journaling to be for you. Thanks for hanging out with me in my packing chaotic mess, but above all babes, have fun with it. After five years of consistently journaling, now I couldn't imagine my life without it. Honestly, like really couldn't imagine my life without it. I'm sure it will continue to evolve and change as my reasons and my whys for how and like why I use journaling. Um, But I know it will be kind of second nature to me for the foreseeable future, just like reading books is like and reading books. If you didn't know and you're new around here is my literal favorite hobby. So this is like a quick second and everything, I'll take a little like, um, or I'll show a little video of like what's on my nightstand. It's like my budgeting journal, my to-do list journal, because I, like I said, I'm not a digital girly. Um, I have my journal that I'm currently working on, which is the yellow one, my current reads, 
everything that I want to put my eyes on, either when I wake up throughout the day or I go to bed. Their habits, I care about them and I make them at the forefront of what I see and kind of what I do. If you're up for it, tell me if you currently journal or if you're a newbie and looking to start one um, and we can chat in the comment section. If you have questions, throw them down there. I will answer them. Otherwise, be well, babes. I will catch you in the next one and happy journaling. Bye.